All right, folks. Today we're going to be talking about refrigeration systems and got some demos. All right, so before we begin, I kind of want to take a photo of all of you <laughs> with a thermal camera. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, yep, just as so I thought. It's a pretty hot audience out here. <laughs> um, all right, so I am Amitab Shrivastav, and today I'm going to be talking about Refrigerator which is an attempt to uh, open source refrigeration systems. But I want to begin with a story. So it's a warm summer morning. Before you wake up, your house starts cooling down. But there are no air ducts, no drafts. The refrigerant running through the walls simply cools the entire house down. You head down to the kitchen and open the fruits cabinet. You chuckle as you think that not too far back, all of the refrigerated food in a house used to be kept in the same thing called a refrigerator. How funny. Um, different things need different temperatures and humidity. Um, every cabinet, cabinet is its own temperature control environment. You head to your water purifier that has two tanks, one for cold water, one for hot water. It takes the heat from the cold side, puts it to the warm side. Makes sense, right? Efficiency. <laughs> you head down to the patio, and as you sit down, the patio furniture cools down to the perfect temperature. Sure, it's a little annoying to move the furniture around because the coolant tubes get in the way, <laughs> but it's a small price to pay for comfort. You head down uh, into the bathroom for a cold shower, and <laughs> the water is actually cold, not the lukewarm that the city supplies, because the entire house cooling system chills the water for you. And of course, um, as you come out of the shower, you're greeted with a hot towel. The excess heat from the cold water goes on to give you a nice warm towel. Time to get to work. You boot up your machine, and it switches on instantly. And of course it would. It is a computing beast that is plugged into the wall, not only for power, but also for coolant. Gone are the days of noisy fans. Everything from a television and PS4 to lights and power adapters run cooler and last longer because they're actually cooled. Time to get some work done. Uh, so you head down into the basement, and switch on your CNC machine, the water-cooled spindle uh, makes a slight humming noise. It is much smaller than a typical air-cooled motor, and because of that, the entire machine is much leaner and cheaper. Time to head out for coffee. You pick up your jacket that has a face change material in it. That's a perfect 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and you take a short bike ride to the nearby cafe. As you dock your bike into the, uh, into the cafe, the bike starts recharging, and the coolant uh, from the cafe cools down your battery, increasing battery life and charging rate. As you dock your jacket back um, inside the cafe, the uh, <laughs> As you uh, put your jacket on the coat hook at the cafe, the coolant line starts recharging the face change material and for your journey back out. Now the question is, where are you gonna head next? <laughs> so, this, <laughs> the story of a weird, uh, fun refrigeration future was kind of thought up um, by my friend Aaron and me. Aaron is a third generation 
HVAC technician with more than 15 years of experience in industrial um, HVAC and refrigeration. And uh, through Aaron, I came to know that the HVAC industry is kind of stuck in the 80s. Sure, the um, CFCs and HCFCs have been kind of replaced with hydrocarbons, but mostly we're running on the same technology, right? Innovation is not slapping an iPad on a refrigerator. <laughs> Innovation is making things modular, it's making things repairable, it's making things, things for all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and as an EPA certified HVAC technician myself, I got the license on Tuesday. Um, <laughs> thank you. I also um, know that the HVAC industry, unfortunately, is a little bit um, us versus them. If you're not part of the HVAC kind of collective alliance thing, um, you often get markup on equipment of like more than 100%, like 2x the price. Um, so, you know, this is not an industry that is built for uh, innovation. Right. So that's where I think that open source hardware can really come in and change the game of uh, what we think of as refrigeration. I want to show you the simplest refrigerator possible. And it is not here. <laughs> uh, but it's a simple CO2 cartridge. Um, it contains pressurized gas inside a cylinder. And this thing is typically used for uh, pumping up bicycle tires. But essentially, when you let that carbon dioxide gas expand rapidly, all those molecules that were really close to each other, as they come far apart, those intermolecular forces need to be overcome. So the molecules slow down and the temperature goes down. Temperature is simply a measure of how fast the molecules are moving. So you could actually take this thing hiking with you and have a chilled cocktail at the top of a mountain uh, it's, yeah, uh, it, there actually is a product that makes this, and, uh, this exact thing with just a little bit more heat. Um, um, it absorbs a little bit more of the heat, but essentially it's like a chilling stick for, um, for your cocktails. And this probably is the second easiest uh, refrigerator that I can think of. And what it is, is a couple of, um, it, it's basically three copper tubes, the red one, um, then a little uh, capillary one, and then the blue one. And this blue one here is uh, not connected to anything, it's just for kind of as a control. What I'm doing here is pumping air into the red tube through a bicycle compressor, uh, which is what I have here as well. Um, as I pump the air and compress it, it heats up, right? And as that hot air goes into this red tube, it exchanges some of the air, um, some of the temperature with the air and cools down a little to ambient room temperature. And then when it goes through this capillary tube, um, it finds itself into the blue um, tube, which is at atmospheric pressure. So suddenly it goes from like three or four atmosphere pressure to one atmosphere pressure, expands rapidly and cools down. So you can barely make out on the thermal camera there, the, uh, the side right on the, just on the left side, well, my left, your right, of the capillary tube is a little darker shade of purple, and that's a small decrease in temperature. Now, the decrease in temperature is very low because air is a very poor refrigerant. And, the, and that's what the, uh, I mean, but essentially the core concept of refrigeration is exactly the same, okay? Um, it's just, if I were to do the same thing in a propane atmosphere, I would get a much larger uh, drop in temperature. This whole journey started when I wanted a water chiller for my laser cutter. And uh, it, was, it was crazy to me that I couldn't find a water chiller for less than $300, where I could find an ice maker for $90 new and 20 bucks on Craigslist. And I was like, they're both boxes that make cold. Right? So I'm like, okay, let's take the ice maker. And I ripped it apart and I got rid of the case. I got rid of the electronics. I didn't need any of that. I just took the thing that makes cold and I put it in water and then it made the water cold. <laughs> it was really as simple as that. 
The, the thing on top is called the evaporator, and it typically makes the ice cubes. I just carefully bent the copper tubes, making sure not to kink it so that um, uh, the, the, the tube ruptures and the refrigerant leaks out. But I just did that, and I made an instructable about it, uh, sharing the process. And Roger, uh, on instructables, made one of his own. In fact, he made some improvements. And I was, you know, wow, this is amazing. Like, you know, you can make uh, a water chiller for like less than 100 bucks. In fact, I took this water chiller and then um, I bought a cover for my mattress that had just a bunch of silicone wire, uh, silicone tube going around it. So I can pump this cold water through the silicone tube and, you know, have a chilled mattress. And it worked really well. In fact, it worked so well that my partner asked me to remove it because it was too cold, <laughs> which I count as a win. <laughs> but you can imagine uh, that you can uh, very quickly take the system and add temperature sensors, uh, humidity sensors, to make sure that you're keeping the mattress slightly above the dew point, not to get any condensation. You can set up zones uh, so that you know different uh, parts of the mattress are at different temperatures. And you can do this entire thing for less than 300 bucks, which is about the 10th of the price of what you can buy a cooled mattress for, which is great. So now that we uh, have you know, seen some of what, uh, what makes a refrigerator, let's actually have a look at uh, the full refrigeration cycle. And this is uh, the most common kind of refrigerator that you would find in your, um, in your kitchen refrigerator or at the supermarket. Um, chiller. At the very bottom is a compressor. So it compresses refrigerant gas and makes it very high pressure. So on the, on the left side, we have the low pressure system. And on the right side, we have the high pressure system. So the compressor takes in low pressure vapor and then puts out high pressure vapor, which is very hot because you're compressing it and it heats up. Uh, and that goes into the condenser, which is a big radiator on your kitchen refrigerator. It'll be on the back. And there, the hot uh, vapor just cool down to, uh, cools down to ambient temperature. And typically, refrigerants liquefy at that temperature. And that's what makes refrigerants special, is that at ambient temperature and high pressure that the compressor provides, they become liquid. They go through a dryer, uh, which is there just to remove any moisture, because moisture can be very corrosive. Um, and then goes through a capillary tube, which is very similar to the capillary tube that we have here uh, in between the red and the blue tubes. And that's there just to maintain that pressure difference between the high side and the low side. Now, this um, liquid refrigerant, as it goes through the capillary tube and finds itself in the low pressure environment, again, it just rapidly expands, starts boiling off, and it needs energy to boil, right? And it takes that energy from whatever is inside the refrigerator, making it cold. So now that we have seen uh, uh, this, uh, this refrigeration cycle, right? Most of it, the top part, is like on that chair in front of you. Like it's very simple. It's plumbing, right? But to me, the compressor still feels like black magic. It feels like it's doing something to make things cold that you know I don't understand. So. A compressor is a black box, and what do we do to black boxes? <laughs> we take an angle grinder to them. <laughs> and so we did, and that's how I ended up with compressor choreography. This little cute art project <laughs> that um, is, is the guts of um, an ice maker compressor. And most of it is just a motor. Um, this piston that I have my finger on right now that's moving up and down, that's the compressor part of the compressor. It's this tiny little thing that's just moving back and forth and some steel valves that take in you know, vapor and compress them. No black magic. You know? If you can take apart a chainsaw engine, you can, you know, uh, probably refer, reverse engineer it to make something very similar. Um, and uh, yeah, a bicycle pump is the same kind of compressor as what is inside your ice maker. And finally, <laughs> to talk about the pièce de résistance. Uh, 
the backpack refrigerator. The backpack refrigerator um, was something that Aaron and I made over a weekend, like literally, for the New Lab um, open house party um, last year. And you can sort of tell that it was made over a weekend, right? <laughs> it, it's not pretty, but it works. And it cools a single bottle of liquor, um, which is pretty cool. But the point that we were trying to make uh, with, with the backpack was that you can, uh, if, if you know how to, it's very easy to make a DIY refrigerator. Um, and it does not have to take a long time. It does not have to take a lot of resources. So let's get creative um, with our refrigeration ideas and let's kind of get together. So refrigeration is, uh, it, well, it, it is a dangerous hobby. You're dealing with high pressure, sometimes caustic chemicals. Uh, so I would not suggest that you go out and like, you know, just start taking apart ice makers. But I think the best parallel that I can draw is ham radio, right? Same as uh, with refrigeration, you're dealing with something that's very dangerous, but there's a community um, and there are um, educational tools and set ways to get inculcated into the field. But then once you're there, you can make some very incredible things. So I would like the same to happen for refrigeration systems. And by the way, I want to shout out Josh Levine. Uh, hi, Josh who has been uh, making videos on refrigeration systems for a very long time. And I didn't realize that he's based out of Brooklyn as well. And I've learned a lot from his videos. So thanks, Josh. And yeah, uh, for some reason, people really love the backpack refrigerator. And you know, if this is what, takes, uh, what it takes to get people excited about refrigeration systems, then sure, <laughs> you know, let's, let's have a party. Let's all come together and make backpack liquor chillers, but, but also, you know, once we get excited, let's start thinking about vaccine refrigeration. Let's start thinking about a bicycle powered refrigerator. Let's start thinking about minus 80 degrees Celsius cryo coolers for microbiology, right? All that is possible and it's not black magic. Um, so join us on the discord um, and, you know, let's start building. <laughs> Thank you.